are back. The BAL is back. Season two of the Basketball Africa League tips off today in Dakar, Senegal. On a thrilling journey that will see 12 teams from 12 different countries battle it out in two conferences in a quest to secure one of the lucrative top four places and qualify for the playoffs. So quarterfinals, call them what you like. They'll be taking place in Kigali, Rwanda in May. Oh my word, it's so exciting. We've got musicians who are just coming onto the court. Uh, the first tip-off of so many games in three different cities that will be taking place. We're going to Cairo next month, but first of all, Dakar is the place to be. And I'm going to introduce you to the team here for this extraordinary competition. My man, Quentin Denison. Q, next to me, my wingman. How are you, brother? Absolutely excellent, Robbie. It's great to be back. BAL season two, looking forward to it. So much excitement to come. And we have Asha Kumagisha, our courtside reporter. Asha, how are you? I'm doing great. Very excited to be here and also for season two of the BAL. Wow, let's get the rhythm going and we'll be back with you in a few moments' time. Just listen and enjoy. This is Senate. Senegal, people, Senegal. I need a couple. I need a couple. 
continue that was in by Guifai and his drummers wonderful music wonderful sounds of course we really are getting a nice taste of the culture of Senegal and we'll continue now because we've got the the rapper DIP who's gonna come and join us in in a moment with of course summer dancers before we get to hear from the president of the BAL and the founder of this competition Amadou Diallo Fal. Coming right now, put a murder when you may not know. I mean, I'm the nightmare, yeah, the nightmare. you know, the nightmare the is me. Coming right now, put a murder when you may not know. I mean, yeah. Merci beaucoup à la Biel, merci à tout le monde. Allez. The Car Arena makes a noise for Deal! And now, it's time to meet the Jews for some Oh. 
We are only moments away from the start of the first battle, the first clash, the first game here for this season two of the Basketball Africa League here in Dakar, here in Senegal. Uh, Q, very, very exciting, fantastic to see such a massive crowd. I think we've got an interesting battle as well between neighbours, of course, uh, with DUC Duke. It is, of course, Dakar University. And, uh, well, they're, they're basically the... They're the locals. They're going to come up against the Seydoux Legacy Athletic Club Slack of Guinea over the border. It's a massive battle. We've got to get off to the right start. We do, and I think from the entertainment alone, we've gotten off to the right start. It's created the energy here in the building, and while we go through these player introductions, the starting five is being introduced to the crowd. Jake Diallo, no stranger to the individuals here at Dakar Arena. And we had Slack coming in first. They've gone with an interesting starting five, going along with Fofana, as well as Miller Jr., Corbett, Nziako, Obekwa, and Mbai to get the start. And uh, looking at what we have on the other side, Niang, Diallo, Faye, Abudu, and Diakite getting the start along for the Duke outfit. Yeah, so uh, basically, just to put you in the picture, we have 13 uh, players on uh, each roster. Uh, we've got uh, two foreign players from outside of Africa. We've got two African players from outside of the country that have qualified. And of course, there you can see, there's the, uh, the coach of Slack. It's Selko Zeshevic. Very experienced coach. Coaches the Ghanaian national team, and he's going to add all of that to this outfit. De nous avoir rejoint ce jour pour l'ouverture de la deuxième saison de la Basketball Africa League. Au nom de la BAL, de la NBA, de FIBA, bienvenue au Sénégal. Welcome to Senegal, the, the country of Taranga hospitality. We firmly believe the BAL will be a top professional league in the world and basketball can be an economic growth engine for communities across Africa. Let me thank our partners, our teams, the players, coaches, team personnel, medical staff, all our operational team, but mostly thank you, the fans, for supporting us on this journey. And this expanded PAL second season, we have an incredible opportunity to continue shining a light on Africa's capacity to be a global leader as we write another chapter on the story of basketball's growth on our beautiful continent. Thank you, merci, Jeff, Jeff, game on. Thank you, Amadou Galo. Today in Senegal, we continue to make history, strengthening roots of that. Some very strong words there from the president of the Basketball Africa League. And what he's done is absolutely incredible. We're only moments away from tip off. Of course, these are the two captains for Duke and also for Slack. Momentous moment. We get ready for the kick or the tip off, rather, of season two. So much pressure you feel on the home team, but just as much pressure on the underdogs. And I don't know if we can call them underdogs, but you always have to give that, that little edge to the hosts. It's it's exactly that. It is uh, Q. You know, I think that we've um, you, you've nailed it. It is the start of a new era, and of course, it's an extended competition. Uh, last year we were just in Kigali, Rwanda, and, um, and all of the games took place there right through until Zamalek went all the way beating US Monastir here. This is the, this is the clash that's going to take place, and we have 15 games here, and then we move to Cairo. Let's have a look at the starting lineups. Niang starting at the point guard, Diallo Faye 
It's going to be an exciting backcourt, and it's going to be a battle, I believe, of the shooters. And then the, the pay protection. Have to talk about the inside presence of Obekwa on the other side. Coach Zelko Zetchevich, who we spoke about, taking the reins. U.S. Monaster, A.S. Saleh, some of the teams that he's been in charge of, and now he has the responsibility of leading Slack in this opening encounter. Yeah, spent 10 years uh, coaching in Italy, a uh, big basketball nation, of course, as we know, with Milan and Bologna, uh, just showing us what they can, Benet Benetton Treviso. Uh, he's, he's got lots of attributes and, and experience, bringing it here and, and trying to see what he can do, of course, with Slack. And uh, it's the first time for, for this team from Guinea to actually qualify. It's the first team from Guinea to qualify for the BAL. This is massive. Here we got um, the perfect Ajibon. Uh, well, what a character he is. Wonderful character in charge of the Senegalese team. Of course, you know, you're on home soil, home court. This is amazing for him in front of all of these crowds. A lot of expectations here. Both these teams making their debut. And of course, they're beating out AS1 to get into exactly. the spot. And you feel that because of that, they, they come in, and I'm going to say one more time, as slight favorites here, as uh, we see the starting five start to make their way out to the court. And Robbie, we're, we're minutes or seconds away, rather, from history being made once again. And I can feel the excitement in the building. Yeah, Asha, Asha, Komigashar, uh, you're going to give us a little bit of a, you know, um, a feeling of the atmosphere in here, isn't it? Electric. It is electric, as you know, the Dakar Arena has the current record of the most, the biggest stadium with the biggest audience at 15,000 in Africa. And so to see these fans coming out to support uh, Duke means so much for the fans, but also for the country of Senegal as a sporting nation. Well, you're just getting the tone. The tone has been set. Thanks, you. Thank you, Asha. Listen, we'll come back to you a little bit later on. We're going to be, you know, going you know, just courtside, left, right, and centre. So you'll be part of this mix right through until you know the final buzzer. That's for sure. And afterwards, um, but let's get down to action. Of course, we got the starting fives who are out here. A uh, lot of expectations, um, and we've got, of course, um, the officials. We've got to mention the officials. Absolutely, have to mention the officials. We have a South African out there, Greg Dandridge, Kaluma Tonton, and then the special story of Sarah Al Shanubi. Al Shanubi of Egypt. Egypt, yeah, absolutely. Female um, official, of course, which is fantastic. More and more uh, female participants in the uh, in the referee department, which is wonderful. That's the way it should be, and that is the future, of course. Uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about lots of that a little bit later on with Usher, of course. But uh, uh, let's get down to the tip off. Uh, a lot at stake. A lot at stake indeed. We're just getting everything sorted and. You know, of course, the, the, the timing is going to be very important. Just so you know, we've got four quarters, of course, and uh, we've got timeouts, uh, you know, and, and the changes, the subs can just come, they can come on as they like, you know. And so many new additions to, to this year's competition. We have to talk about the BAL Elevate program, where kids from the NBA Academy, have each, each team has adopted a new athlete, and uh, they will be on show. And, of course, four the team from Slack, or the team from Guinea, it is Serene Mbai who's going to be taking up that mantle. And on the other side, it's Babaka Sane. And uh, we might get to see them a little bit later as the competition develops. The coaches can use them at their will. But another great initiative as far as uh, the BAL is concerned, especially in developing the game and the individuals and the talent on the continent. It's absolutely fantastic. Lots of stories like that, by the way, and we'll be talking about those prospects, uh, not just in this conference, but also in the Nile Conference, where there's another six teams who are waiting with bated breath to get into the heart of the action. They want to get involved. They want to start playing bouncing balls, of course. But here, first of all, it's Sahara, and we are ready to get down to business. The BAL Season 2 begins right here, right now. And it is Duke who pick up the ball with that man, Tierno Niang. Spend a bit of time in Milwaukee with the Panthers. Look for him to try and impose himself on the offensive end early. Good chance for a three shoot. Oh, wonderful. It's dropped in beautifully. Jordan Abadou. He's the Frenchman out wide. Quick pass. In she goes. Ideal start for the home team. 
Slack picking the ball up at the back. Marcus Crawford, he's going to be a play a big role for the team from Guinea. Lovely little spin, little pirouettes. The possession's been lost there by Obegpa, the Nigerian. He's going to go back into two hands. Good offensive possession, another great defensive possession. Abadou from the corner, ripping the twine. Just dropping it in so effortlessly. You've been there before, haven't you, Q? I know that corner well. <laughs> oh, that's the nice little pass outside. Loads of time. Oh, it just comes off the rim. A good attempt, though, by Adama Diakite, one of the young prospects, of course, that we talked about. The players that get a chance to shine out here for the very first time. It's pro experience, isn't it? It's wonderful. It's fantastic, and we have to keep an eye on in terms of how the referees are calling the game. I know last year we spoke about it a bit, but different triggers, the merging of, of rules, and that's also another interesting aspect just to keep an eye on as the game unfolds. Yeah, you got Jordan Abudu, who's just uh, uh, put himself on the on the, the referee's radar. Oh, that is sumptuous stuff, isn't it? Just dropping it off the backboard there, just. Uh, Placed in beautifully, soft hands from Mr. Crawford. Almost too easy for an opening bucket. Crawford getting the first two. That's slack. neatly done. Oh, he just couldn't make it. But uh, you can see what danger he he provides his team with. Tian Niang makes space. Good long-range effort from downtown. Off the ring once again. That's Marcus Crawford again trying to look at his uh, get his sights right. A little bit off for the time being, but it's early doors. Abadou cleans up nicely on the defensive glass, and he's, he's making his presence felt early here. Oh, that's lovely, lovely. But there's a little bit of traveling going on there for Mr. Niang. A couple of unforced errors as uh, Niang hands the a turnover the other way, and so it will be slack basketball. Nerves might play a little part, because I know, I'm not sure how used to these players will be accustomed to in terms of crowd because uh, because of what we experienced in Kigali. Well, he just draws the defender, gets, gets the ball into into the paint, but well, it's uh, once again, it's uh, a little bit of confusion there as he went meandering through into into the danger zone, just couldn't really produce anything from that, uh, from that move, which is a bit of a shame. Second handling error we've seen from Slack inside the painted area. Nyang gets the ball out wide, Jordan Abudu. Oh, he gets into the paint, that's lovely work, but it uh, hasn't been drained there by Diakite, and it's been picked up. Good chance for Slack to try and uh, uh, push forward a little bit, try and get themselves some points, turn things around, having made a couple of early mistakes. Oh, there's a good drive, the ball comes out into the left-hand side of the D, out wide, but the pass is not good, and it's going to be Duke who pick up possession. It might be. He's livid. Look at the state of uh, the, the Serbian coach, Zelko Zetrovic. He wants it to be a little bit more stringent, a little bit more uh, tight. Well, it might be a little bit more of time for Slack to take a little bit of a break because that's the third time they've got an unforced handling error inside the paint. Well, we're just warming up in here, of course, in this Dakar arena. Uh, well, there you go. That's the uh, foul that's been committed. And all eyes on Marcus Crawford, former U.S. Monastir, American player, of course. And uh, there you go, a little, a little hand slap, isn't it? He's swatting the fly. Unnecessary foul. And uh, what it does is that it gives Duke a chance now at the free throw line. And that man, Czech Faye, uh, Senegalese international at junior level. He plays his basketball in the NCAA. And he makes it to the right way. Yeah, he's an interesting player, very good passer of the ball, doesn't shoot enough, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll see how he gets on here. Probably encouraged to do a little bit more of that, I think, uh, uh, under, under, under the, the tutorship of uh, Parfit Ajivon, I think. Important position. Well, there's Crawford once again. Oh, that is sublime there from just inside of the D. A little churn, he managed to keep uh, the defender away from him, just dropping it in beautifully. Allowed for the isolation, Crawford makes them pay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. whatever you can do, I can do better. He's How had a hot hand right now, does Abadou. You know, he's going to be their go-to man, I think. Um, you know, just out wide because he's got a really fine shot on him, isn't he? Uh, former Nancy Monaco Chalon player. Uh, you know, some good some, some good uh, pro-8 teams that he played for back in France. 
and a Sava Ale, huh? Regard. Boom. You Wide know, open. French, you know your French, <laughs> don't you? Asha knows her French anyway, that's for sure. She speaks fluent French. She speaks many languages, Asha. She'll be talking to us in a minute. Uh, we'll just follow this play. Here's a little run. You gotta dunk it! And you have indeed. It's been drained in a big way. It comes from that man, Jane Anthony Miller. Well, Miller Jr. Defense turning into offense earns the opportunity to put a little showtime down. Showtime, good ball, good hands, good hands, and it's the response, isn't it? It's beautiful, Adama Diakite on that occasion. How they managed to just realize that there was one less defender there, make the pass. Would have liked to see Diakite return that dunk, but... Oh! <laughs> that is absolutely outstanding, look at that. But there's a, you know, the, the look is, where, how did he manage to do that? Back and forth we go, it's fantastic. Oh, Bekba oh, doing the business, the Nigerian, of course. Yeah. One of, oh, you can't give the ball away like that, it's into the hands, and there is the drain once, oh, the, oh my word, you can't make mistakes like that, sir. And it's Anthony Miller Jr. Doing a, making a rare mistake. Little smile there, he's going, oh, sorry, guys. That wasn't ideal, was it? Miss but that was, from that replay, that was just sterling stuff. Showing how it should be done, oh, Bekba on this end, and then just the error from the slack players, and we've seen too many of those, but the scoreline doesn't present that because it's 10-8, it's only a single possession game. That's a nice layup, beautifully done, oh, using the backboard on that occasion. And Adam Diakite, he's on fire at the moment, that's a couple of good scores for him. Inside out they go, a couple of shots from the outside, and now Diakite making the play on the inside. It's a four-point lead for Duke. And a good drive, how aggressive is that? That is fantastic. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you see them just sh finding that gap, Ziakor is deadly like that, very aggressive, very determined player when he goes into the D. Some G League experience for in Ziakor, and he shows it all there on that play. Uh, a little bit of miscommunication. Um, use your head, use your head. Trying to translate, you know, but uh, you know he's not a happy man, is he? And uh, we got a first. Uh, well, the timeout, isn't it? You know, it's just five minutes and nine seconds in. So we'll take a little moment to understand, and the coaches will have a little bit of a a chat, you know, with the players, get them grounded, and then come back and see what's happening. Welcome back to the Dakar Arena, and uh, we just got a, an early foul just after the timeout. So it's two points between uh, Duke of Senegal and Slack of Guinea. Uh, we're just going to go and talk to Asha for a quick moment. Asha, just um, while this play is going on, uh, what's going on? What's, what, what are you seeing from this uh, the first five minutes of this opening clash? Well, obviously, you can see two sides that come from countries that are big rivals across the sporting courts. It's Senegal up against Guinea. It's a West African affair, and you can see them matching each other for talent. And it should be an interesting game uh, so far. You can see how close it is. It's tied. It's 12 up, um, and expect it to go on like that. Will you be able to go? Oh. <laughs> Your timing is perfect, Asha, look at that. It's just been draining the moment that you wrap up yeah, your little interlude, which is beautiful. Thank you so much. That was sensational. That was how it just dropped in. Stunning stuff from Cheikh to the Anfai. Picking up five points already. Abadou leads all the scorers on the floor with six. And that drive in uh, doesn't quite work out, doesn't go the way of Slack. Obekwa is going to have a big presence in the paint. He's a noted paint protector and shot blocker and uh, getting it done now on the offensive end. Tionba Mara is another player who's come on and uh, he will be part of this slack. They'll be, they'll be very determined to try and get themselves the right result. Uh, they play five games each, of course. They've got a uh, Pavan Ajibon who's uh, vocal on the side on the side of the court, of course, uh, which is understandable because there's things that are going on. He's having a little chat there, and you can see that with Sheikh Diallo, um, who needs to get into the game a little bit more. You know, we expect uh, great things from him as we see the second shot, just a uh, rebound taken safely there by Jordan Abadou. A quiet start for Diallo indeed. 
but he hasn't needed to input himself just yet. He's play riding the hard hand as far as the offense is concerned. A little bit of patience here to her for Duke as they try and find a little space, find a little gap, find the bright pass under a little bit of pressure. It's good solid defensive play, but look at that drive coming through. Oh, the backboard, and it doesn't come off, I'm afraid, for Jake Diallo, who tries to step up to the platform. He's going so well! Look at that! That is extraordinary stuff! Christopher Ovekpar is the man who's, at, who's making things happen. Fantastic coast-to-coast -coast drive. No one stepped up. Ovekpar, second time we've seen him attack the rim with force. Duke trying to respond. Oh, there's a little bit of a fumble there. The ball goes out, and it's... Uh, they're going to get the ball back, Duke, of course. Just a little bit of a hesitation dribble by Ovekpar. Keeps the defender frozen and then throws it down. <laughs> it's got to happen, it's got to happen, and it's happening. Those big bombardments are happening from downtown in a big way. How did that happen and where did that come from? Shooters have got to shoot, Robbie, and they will continue to shoot, especially when open. What's he, what's he doing now? He can't just, you know, just mix up his skill set and drop one in from way downtown. That would have been a three-pointer. It was a miss, though. He's doing well. That is sensational. It is smooth as you like there from Tien Niang. The backcourt from Dirk trying to get involved now. Niang and Diallo announcing themselves to the scorers. And they're just getting all of the fans all shaken up and into a frenzy. It's dropping in. Oh, that's sensational. I think we, was it just just two, I think. But uh, oh, he might have got the three. He got the three. They, they, they got, got, the got the three. He got the three. Crikey. Ducks down the three. Almost. That's good work. Yeah, really good work from Crawford. Almost steals it away and, and gets another one. Crawford now leading all the scorers on the floor. He's got seven points for Slack. Shooters have got a shoot, and that three ball falls from range as Diallo knocks down his first long range attempt. That's from a ridiculous distance, isn't it? That's what we want to see, of course. There you can see Jake Mama Diallo, three points, and uh, well, he's uh, we expect a little bit more from him. He is the man, spent some time in North Carolina, of course, and now he's back here on home soil looking to try and make his nation proud. A former BWB MVP in 2013 out in my home country, South Africa. Lovely play, very slick play. It's just smooth hands, just rolling it in there, beautifully beautifully done. And uh, you've got to give him plenty of credit there, Keita, because he's uh, he's just got a couple of points back there and it's just made it a one-point game. Very tight encounter. We did say that it's going to be a tight one this one, Q, and I think that, uh, well, it's living up to that expectation at the moment. It's tight and high scoring. You know, sometimes games like these, the, the defense can, can be prominent. But right now, we are seeing some great offensive efficiency and execution by both teams. Just 133 left on the clock. There's a good chance to drop or two. Uh, three points in, just gets knocked off as well. There's a beautiful rebound, sensational. And that's where you want him to be, Jordan Amadou. Not just that wide, but coming in and doing the dirty work. He's showing that he's got range from the outside and then hustle on the inside. Abudu, two more to his total. He's got eight. Reminds me of my wingman. He <laughs> hustles in the middle, does some good stuff on the outside, but he shines. Oh! <laughs> Bring it on! I'm afraid that not all of the fans here in the Dakar Arena jump for joy because, of course, you know, we're talking about slack. But uh, in any case, we appreciate those kind of shots. That was immense. Oh, lovely ball. Lovely pass into the paint and a beautiful second attempt of the rebound dropped in, dropped in big time by Diakite. Diakite sticking with it. There was a blocked shot on his first attempt, but ball came back out to him, composed himself, and allowed him to get the two. Diakite. Two point game, Robbie. It's nice and intense the way we like it. Usher, this atmosphere here is just insane. Now, you've seen a lot of sport in Senegal over the past few years. Is this what it's like all the time? Well, obviously, the Senegalese fans are known for being organized and always coming together to make sure that they support the national teams. They're fresh from the Africa Cup of Nations where they won uh, the trophy. So to see them here celebrating and cheerleading Duke uh, is a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. Look at the rhythm and the rhyme and the color and the and the and the chime and everything is just you know it's 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 metro metronomic and you know, I love it. It's visually stimulating and it's been 
absolutely engaging here in this tightly contested first quarter. This is Africa. This is what it's all about. Oh, a lovely little turn. The attempt at two mid-range comes back off the, the ring, and it's back into the hands of this man, Hannah Tariq Ali, who's the, uh, the American. But, uh, well, that's a little error, I think. He's a little bit frustrated about that as well. That, that's a big error, especially Sorry, big with, error. with the right. final position of the quarter. And uh, you can see Coach Zisovic is not happy about what just happened. They call the eight seconds. They're contesting it, but uh, a timeout, I, I think, is being called. But the reaction there from from Coach Zetsovic, the uh, the Serbian coach. And, and this confusion right now as, as to what, what's happening. Because I think there was an off-the-ball foul called. And well, they're getting the ball back, Duke, it looks like. I mean, the initial call was, was, was an eight seconds call, but I think on the other side there was an off the ball foul call, and that's why uh, Duke will be getting it back. Yeah, the foul was on Hami Tariq Ali, of course, you know, just uh, when we got to that eight seconds, so it was either we're going to go one way or the other. Finally, uh, they're just trying to sort this out to make sure that they get it right, and you've got to start off. You know, with everything in a pristine place. And uh, we've got the right officials here to make that happen, of course. And the call will be the right call. Well, it was a bailout call as far as Sankong was concerned because uh, that would have been some egg on his face. And they continue, coaches and referees. And now the timeout was called. They cancelled it. And we're going to go uh, and get the final 13 seconds. Yeah, exactly. To get the ball back, as we said, is uh, Jordan Abadou just getting the ball into the hands of Hami Tariq Ali, last chance saloon. It's seven seconds on the clock. They can try and get a shot in. Here's the chance, good defending there. That's lovely, but it's not on target. And it's gone back out, and uh, it looks like that we have come to the end of the first quarter. And there you have it. What an interesting little battle we've got on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're watching wherever you are in the world because you've got access to this. It is 24-22, Duke leads slack, and we're gonna take a little break. Welcome back to the Dhaka Arena. We are here in Senegal. I tell you, we've got this wonderful competition that's taking place, and you'll be absolutely mad. You'll be nuts if you're not following it because we got some wonderful basketball ahead of us, haven't we, Q? We certainly do, and that's, it's great for the game, the fact that it's only a one-possession game. 24-22 it was in that first quarter. Marcus Crawford leading the way as far as Slack is concerned with his seven points. And then on the other side, it was Abadou, Jordan Abadou with his eight points, Diakite with his six, and Faye with five. You know, a, a triple threat as far as the scoring is concerned. But Slack staying in it with their balanced scoring effort and uh, finding varied ways to just break down the defense. But there's little, there's, there's little to choose between them. And the funny thing is, even though there's a, a, almost a packed house in here, it hasn't seemed to affect Slack. Yeah, and there's, uh, there's the Frenchman who's uh, running the show at the moment for Duke, uh, Jordan Apadou, uh, the Frenchman who's, uh, there you go, eight points so far. Um, they've got five players who've scored points. Uh, there we can see him just uh, dropping in a three points there with a beautiful jump shot just outside of the D earlier on. He's the top man at the moment, and that's a long-range effort there coming in from that man, Serene Saliwambai. Oh! A frenzy in the paint off the rim, and it's made safe by Christopher Obekpa. Quickly up to Crawford. Crawford, and he's going for his three, but it comes off the rim. Nicely a tidied up. Good opportunity. Oh, the defense is in place. And that was very good from Crawford, just showing off his attacking prowess at one end and then coming back to defend like a lion. The transition defense, highly important. And what they didn't do was take advantage of it, but you, you can look at the, the, the style of play of Duke, and they do like to push the ball up in transition, and they can hit from the inside and the outside. Chick Diallo getting the ball out wide. It's been picked up by uh, Terry Kali, mid-range, coming off the metal. Here he is again, the American. Wants a bit more movement, wants to just drop it into the hands of the big man. It goes up and it goes in. Tadric Lufile, he is the man from the DRC, the big man who's making, well, a, a big move here in the second quarter. A chance for some iso ball, and Lufile gets his first two. Yeah, he's going to be important for uh, 
for this Team Duke, of course, uh, coming from Kinshasa. It opened up. That boulevard just opened up. There was no one there. There was no one. They were all parked on the side of the boulevard. You've got to get in there and defend. Come on, Q. We have a word for that. It's called poor defense, and that will not please the coach at all. That's two words. Two words. Poor defense. That's correct. That's right. <laughs> Unless you've got a hyphen, a, a, a special Q hyphen. Oh, look at that, the defense, majestic in a big way. We're going up for a pair, and it's been uh, defended really well. Oh, he's going to try and get that ball out quickly, gets it out to Ali. Here he is, Tariq Ali for three. Oh, it's gone in, it's a beauty down that left flank. In transition, Ali, no defense comes up on him. He pulls up, knocks down the three. He's still moving. It was just poetry in motion. We love it. Here we all oh, that's uh, the attempt. And uh, well, it's uh, an offensive foul, in fact. So Duke picking up possession there, just down in that corner. Good bit of work. Miller is the primary the ball handler the right now for Slag. And he's looking to create. That time just a little bit too forceful. Could the ball could have gone either way. This time it goes the way of the home team. Duke ball. 29-24. It's a, a tricky passage, and uh, Duke can see some momentum right now with the score on this position. Here he is, Planetary Kali. Nice pass into the corner, and it's dropped in. Ariel Diop doing the business as the captain, leading by example. Great execution on that position, and now a chance in transition. Great defensive play once again. He's going out wide. It's a lovely pass, and he's got so much time. It comes back off the medal. It was a good attempt to try and drop at him from Basaru Bar, one of the youngsters in this Duke team. Of course, it's a university team, and uh, they've got a lot of fans here in this Dakar arena, I can tell you that. It's dropped up, it's gone quite high. Little flick of the fingers to try and get it out of the reach of the defender, but the target has been missed. Good work, straight down the middle, but uh, foul's been committed. A frenetic tempo being played here. Uh, both these teams almost relentless in the, the way that they continue to tag up and down into the paint in transition. And Babaka Sané. Timeout to the free throw line. The NBA Academy player, part of the BAL Elevate program, and the young man going to get a chance to get his name on the score sheet. Yeah, it's going to be a great moment for him. And uh, I, I want to just uh, pick the brains of, of Asha Kumagisha because she knows all about all of the uh, uh, the female influence, of course, of all of the um, the coaches here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about? We've got an Australian coach, of course, who's very famous in Africa. Uh, we've also got a female coach in this Duke team who is working alongside Parfait Ajibon. Well, obviously, it's very interesting to see Coach Liz Mills become the first yes, female yes. head coach of okay. a team at the Basketball Africa League. Last summer, she was uh, the first female coach in the history of the FIBA Afro Basket, coaching Kenya. Um, and obviously, like you say, Kadiata Job. Uh, as assistant, uh, as assistant coach of uh, Duke, just makes it really interesting. She's been uh, in charge also as assistant coach of the Senegalese women's national team. She's a three-time MVP, so her involvement in basketball is sort of what uh, inspired the head coach, uh, Parfait Adjofon, to invite her to assist him here at the BAL. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Usher. And uh, you know, all of this information that you're bringing in to make uh, this, this broadcast uh, really, really full. You know, it's you're like a walking archive, in fact, you know. I mean, you just got so much information. You get the information, you reel it out, and you, you pick it out from nowhere, and, and there it is. And speaks 18 languages. And 18 languages, there you go. We'll, 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 we'll talk to you about that a little bit later, I said. Let's get back to the business. This is the man we were talking about. This is this is the youngster, of course, and it's uh, Baba Kassani. He's got himself into this team, which is absolutely fantastic, and he'll be looking to try and get himself uh, a couple of points uh, through the NBA. Um, He's come through the NBA Academy, isn't he? Yeah, he's come through the NBA Academy, represented Senegal at a junior level, uh, at the under-18 uh, level in the 2020 FIBA Afro Basket. And the, the, the draft or the scouting report on him is that he's primarily a strong on-ball defender. Uh, and uh, I suppose when you're really great on defense, defense turns to offense, he gets out into transition. But uh, that, that's what he's here to do. 
and he stands at 201. Yeah, that's a good six foot seven. It's it's a good size. He's a big, strong, burly guy. Um, he he's got a great future ahead of him. Of course, that's one of the reasons why he's being he's he's, he's being brought in to, to play for for Duke, and it's um it's great to see a great passer of the ball and a good leader as well. He'll communicate on court, and you'll see him you know talk to the older guys and say, yeah, I think we should do this. And, you know, I like that. I think that that's good. As long as they don't go too far and they listen to the wise men, you know. It's the exuberance and uh, the bravery of youth. And, and it's fantastic. The, the job of experience is to help shape that uh, and direct the head of the spear. <laughs> there you go. There's the, the, a philosophy lesson from, from our man Q. It's all true. It's all true. Uh, it's, uh, it's been pinched, isn't it? A little bit of daylight robbery and an attempt to get the ball back off the the backboard there, but it comes to nothing, I'm afraid, and uh, Slack unable to hit the target on that occasion, and a chance coming from Tarek Ali, who just uh, has his shot come off the ring. Picked up by Dane Anthony Miller, 31 years of age. Studied in New York City, of course. Uh, he was with Slack since 2018, so it's been four years that he's actually been playing with Slack. There's a, he's dropping in an attempt for three from way out wide, and the ball's been poached but I think they're going to get a, a foul against them, Duke. Well, when you talk about Miller, yeah, and his numbers have improved every time he's been with them. In 2018-19, he was averaging 15 and 7, and that's 15.7 rebounds. And then in 2022, in the qualifiers, up this game just a little bit, 16.8, 9.8. So he's very important on the offensive end, and that's why I'm saying he gets a high usage rate, and you'll see the ball in his hands quite a bit. Marcus Crawford. Trying to find an option, trying to find a path. He goes for three, way down to hold. <laughs> that is some sort of stuff, isn't it? He turns around. It's like, oh yeah, business is normal. He's the first player in this 2022 BAL to get into double digits. Crawford has 10 points. There you go. Wide shot coming in from Baba Kassani. Slack going for another long-range shot. Not, they're not shy when it comes to dropping them in from downtown outside of the D. I, I think there was almost too relaxed on that possession, and I didn't like the shot selection from Slack. Well, there's a little push there. I'm afraid it's going to be Duke who get possession here. What's done by that man, Perfect Anjibon. I think that he's got connections with uh, Cape Verde, which are the islands to the west of Senegal in the Atlantic Ocean, about 500 miles, I think, uh, directly west. Beautiful islands. Beautiful islands, and, and they also have a very competitive basketball team. They do. Small nation, but oh, that pass is sumptuous. Look at that. The Tarek Ali just finding Apple's Yop out of nowhere. Everybody just like, way, where did that come from? Found the open man in space, and we're getting a highlight show. It's fantastic, isn't it? Great rebound, and it's that man. Uh, it's, it's wonderfully does, and it? Dane Anthony Miller Jr. just doing the business in the right place at the right time. But there's still an eight-point lead for, for Duke, and they're, they're in a pretty good position as we enter the, the last five minutes of the first half of this season two opener here at the Dakar Arena. It's all happening here. We're buzzing, we're moving, and we're uh, trying to find our way through the uh, the very entertaining start to this competition. It's, 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 uh, there's so much energy here so much energy and it's transferring to what we're seeing on the court uh, both on the defensive end for these teams and some of the highlight plays that we're seeing in terms of the dunks and the shooting but good efficiency and uh, a good opening showcase so far six point game only two possessions in it we talked to uh Previous to the to the opener, of course, uh, about how important it is to get two wins out of your five, which should potentially be enough for you to qualify in the top four, because it's the first four teams out of the six who go through to the final eight, the quarterfinals in Kigali, four from the Sahara Conference here, and then we've of course got six other teams who will be battling it out in Cairo, the capital of Egypt, next month, as we see that. Uh, uh, the youngsters going up to uh, try and drop one in. It's uh, sorry, it's Abel Diop, of course. The the captain is going to try and drop in a couple of points from the 
throw line. I think it's very important, and that's why this game is vital for both Slack and Bill. Want to start with the win and hopefully pick up one or two others as the competition develops. We've progressed to 38 games this year in the BAL season, 15 games to be played here in Dakar. And after the end of the 15 games, two teams will fall away. Deal can't convert the second. Seven points separating these two teams. And the work around the outside, outside to get a little bit of space there. The drive going through and the foul has been committed. He's, he's pretty aggressive when he when he has that little, when he steps on the accelerator, he really goes for it, doesn't he, Dan Anthony Miller Jr. High usage, that left hand, that primary left hand, and that's what you get when you have a primary scorer like that. 16 points per game have to be earned, and you don't just put up numbers like that without putting up shot attempts. He gets it done inside and outside. I'm going to ask uh, Usher a little question. Uh, Usher, re just regarding uh, the format and how things have just uh, been expanded for season two. Uh, next year, it might even be, be bigger, in fact, going to more locations across this beautiful continent we call Africa. Well, obviously, it's exciting, you know, to just even have uh, the caravan movement beginning here in Dakar going to Cairo next month and then eventually going for the playoffs in Kigali. You see a lot of inclusion and now also you have more teams getting involved and also it makes the competition, you know, more exciting. Um, and, and every game is like a final for these teams. It's exactly that. Every game is like a final. And you've got to make the most of everything you possibly get. You take the scraps, you turn them into points. Cedric Lafile doing a fantastic job just directly underneath the ring. Rising up there like a, well, a, what can I call him? Like, like a, like a, a, a light tank. I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's early doors, you know. I'm just trying to sort of, you know, get it all right. Like a rising crocodile, you know, just trying to snap at a jumping fish. I don't know. I mean, the fact is that they're hungry to get points. That's what I'm trying to say. And this is really, really good because they don't want to make mistakes. And they've got, they've got two coaches here who are really stringent, who are obviously, you know, very serious coaches who want to get their boys playing in a big way. They do, and this is a very big possession. The chance to take it over double digits. Uh, if they don't score, this is going to favor Duke. But, uh, the drop in, not good, and it's been picked up, and a great opportunity here. Well, can he just make it? It goes high, goes over the backboard, and there's a, a wasted opportunity there coming from Abel Diop, who, uh, well, he looks into the air and goes, wait, what happened there? That wasn't normal. Key intervention by Obekpa, who's come back on. They've got to keep it, I believe, just within the three possession, nine-point margin, and uh, there's a timeout called now, and the coaches have seen enough 38-29 it is, Robbie, and Slack got some work to do out of this timeout. Little break, we'll be back in a couple of moments. Right back here to the Dakar Arena here in Senegal and his possession for Slack as they try and reel in the uh, uh, the home team, Duke. Uh, it's quite a, quite a healthy lead, isn't it? Nine points, but uh, they've got to make it happen. An aggressive drive through, but how about that for a block? That was just top notch. He gets all of the credit there, doesn't he, Abel Dion? Because he came in there, charging it, and just watched his every move. Just look at that. Playing the role of captain in the paint, and paint protected as well to, to deny Crawford. You're not going through, he said. You're not going to go through. There's no way. Brilliant stuff. That's the defensive game, and that's a defensive game. You've got to bring your A game defensively and offensively, of course. Otherwise, you know, you might as well just stay at home. And these boys have brought it. Well, they've held Slack to seven points here in, in the second quarter in just about seven minutes of play. And uh, based on that last play, we get it. we're going to have another timeout, Robbie. As Slack looking for executions that will help them make some inroads against this tough Duke defense. 38-29, so uh, just, uh, well, it's it's a decent, comfortable lead that this is for, for Duke. We're going to take a little listen and see if what we can pick up from the other uh, microphone in the middle, in the huddle. Okay. 
I'm doing the same play every time. Is the is what we heard, isn't it, from uh, uh, from that man Hamid Hamid Tariq Ali? Ali was playing provider on that, and it's the cut, the recognition of the back door, and superb court vision for the highlight play. Slackney points. They need to get themselves. Uh, you know, they got to get into the 30s now. They got to not allow their host to just uh, move away, and they got to be a little bit more precise. That's a good pass to the right hand side, and it's been dropped in beautifully. That is sensational stuff. And Dane Anthony Miller Jr. I'm just going to call him Miller Jr. because otherwise it's going to be too long. My sentence soon, long. and I'll be out of breath, and it won't be good. Q uh, drops it in. Eight points for Miller Jr. And that's the young man, Baba Karsane. Attacking the rim again, and he's shown no fear whatsoever out on the floor, looking experienced and uh, understanding what he's trying to do with the ball in hand. Yeah, there's some good passing, and they're using it well. Look how committed he is to our communication there, Hamid Tariq Ali. They're listening to him. They know that he's a key figure and element in this in this, in this this team, of course, as we see Babakar Sane stepping up once again. Oh, just doing, doing the cool business the way you like it. Uh, Usher, I want to pick the brains of Usher for a second. We've got um, we got this uh, Duke, the Duke team. Of course, they they kind of uh, leapfrogged AS Dewan into the driving seat in Senegal and um, and got themselves their place in this competition. AS Dewan qualified last year. Yes, I mean uh, Duke had been losing to AS Dewan for three years, and uh, they finally had to find that own. Uh, to make sure that they claim a place in the BAL, which uh, also reminds me of uh, REC, uh, the Rwandan champions who replaced uh, the Patriots, Patriots yeah. eventually. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? There's, uh, they're always jostling. They know that this uh, league now is big business and everybody wants to, you know, have their little piece of the pie. They want to get in there. Look at that, it's dropped in. Oh, there's a little rebound, but it's uh, been picked up, tidied up. Q, you've got something to say, I think. I, I just want to say that, it, that that's what happens when you're hosting and uh, you win the league at home. So it, it puts so much more emphasis on local championships and the ability to make sure that the competition at home matters just as much as this one does. Oh, no, it's a no score, I'm afraid. The was committed before he managed to just uh, arc his hand over, you know, like a like the head and neck of a flamingo. No fear from the young man, Baba Kassane. Four points he has, and now another chance to go to the free throw line. And we've got to keep mentioning that this is a was an innovation this year in the Basketball Africa League. The BAL Elevate program is a new program that sees. One of the NBA Africa Academy prospects joined all 12 of the BL teams. So Baba Kassane, an example, he's at the free throw line. He stayed on the floor, earning significant minutes. But all 12 teams will have a player like Sane or of his caliber. They go five points for Baba Kassane. So you can say he's quality, you know. And they're 18 years of age. All of these players that have been... Uh, uh, you know, picked and, and, and put into each one of the 12 teams. They're quality, and they're going to play an important part in their progress. That's a really good drive, that is. He gets a double chance, and he nails it. It goes in, and it's been uh, scored once again. But Megpa, um, I think that he's what, got six points now, I think. He's got six points, that's correct. It's a battle on the boards, and again, Second and third chance opportunities are going to play a big part. The ability to control the defensive class is crucial here. We'll go back to uh, Duke. There's the uh, the replay. Uh, the winner of the league on five occasions: 2009, 2010, 2013, 2015, 2021. So you can see that they haven't managed to, you know, get that trophy uh, and win that season. They've done it now, and here they are. And of course, a team that plays in the BAL. You'll have players who want to shift around and, and play for other teams. We have a fine example in one of them, don't we? We sure do. And it, it's nice to see what we used to have to take a little Check Diallo. Check Diallo used to play for AS Tuana until last year. He made the move. Sorry, uh, let's get back to the action. I was see looking something. at the action, and uh, the, the, the referees continue to just uh, figure out what the call was. And it's going to be two from the free throw line for the captain. Smooth operation. 
again they push ahead 42 and a chance to make it a 10 point lead which is the first time that they'll have entered double figures and of course 134 until the end of the third quarter uh, until the end of the half first time we go into double digits as you correctly called it Bobby now we've got to change uh, Jordan Abadou is coming on and uh, you know this is this is what they can do as well I think that uh, uh, you've got you've got a you got coach Ajibon he's got a he's got players he can pick from he can bring them off the bench and, and put them on the court and they can make a change they can make a big difference oh that was so, that was a good interception there just as well otherwise that would have been two Oh, it has been dropped in. That's wonderful. Marcus Crawford, you know, out wide. Give him a little bit of space. When he's just, like, getting the mechanics going, honestly, it's just beautiful. It's poetry. I I'm not sure if they're relying too much on the offense of Marcus Crawford, but he's got 13 points now. And he's been the primary spearhead of this slack offense. That's going to... It's going to be a slack who pick up possession there. Now 58 seconds to go. Uh, seven points now. Those three points so so important because otherwise it would have been Duke who get possession and take it ahead and, and move away and try and get 12 or 13. Not the case. It's a good moment. This is for slack. They got possession and they can try and reduce that arrears as the young boy goes off. I'm saying young boy. He's 18, but still. Well, I think they've got to look at where they scored. So Obekpa's got to get a touch here. Ball stolen away. That is such good robbery. Look at that. Fantastic from Tieno Nyang. And finally, the, re the recovery comes, but the foul's been committed. So, of course, they've got a couple of uh, free shots now. And uh, Tieno Nyang doing the business. But they surrounded him like jackals and just basically went for it, didn't they? They really needed a score on that position just to take some momentum into the second half. But Nyang rips it away and then draws the foul. And he'll get a chance now to go to the free throw line. Yeah, it was a member, Sanquan, who uh, lost possession there, just coming on for his first little moments of this opening clash here at the Dakar Arena, as we see Nyang looking to try and uh, drain a couple from the free throw line. Nyang played a big part in Duke making it into this version of the Basketball Africa League. He was the Senegalese League final MVP in 2021. He has played U.S. college basketball out in Milwaukee in the NCAA, and he represents his country, Senegal. Uh, 2014 in the World Cup qualifiers and 2017 Afro Basket. Yeah, in fact, he, he made his debut for Senegal back in 2011. He's been representing uh, this wonderful West African nation for 11 years. How many years did you play for South Africa, Q? I played for nine. Ah, uh, it's not good enough, mate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nine, come on. Remarkable. Uh, another drive and another foul has been committed. Uh, but still, you can see that that, that lead is not looking good, is it? You know, for for Slack, they've got to reduce the arrears. They've got to sort that out. Um, Usher, your thoughts from the side? What's going on? What are you thinking about this? It's a tight tussle, right? It is a tight tussle, but for me, I've been interested in um, what's going on between uh, Babaka Sane when he was on the court and his coach at the NBA Africa Academy, Roland Houston. Uh, there was some winks in there saying, you know, you got this, go and make me proud. Uh, he's been part of his basketball career for at least the last three or four years. And he looks at him as one of the prospects to eventually play in the NBA. So this is a big opportunity and a big stage for him to showcase uh, what he has as a player. Well, it's a good start for him with those five points and uh, plenty of reasons for his coach to be happy with the performance that we've seen so far. Back to the business. Nigeria's Christopher Oegpa spent some time in New Zealand, and that's, um, well, one of the two. Look at that, and he holds his head in his hands, disappointed, of course, thinking, well, I should have done better than that because you can't miss points, can you? You've got to get every shot. Seven points, though, for Obekpa. He's more known for his prowess on the defensive end, and they'll be happy with the offensive production that they're getting from him on the floor. They're working really hard to try and steal the ball as well. No, it's not just the offensive play. Uh, so we see, oh, it's just on the edge of the D. Oh, it's a, it's a net ball, that was. Tieno Yang. And that is the end of the first half. And the scores on the doors, 45 points for Duke, 37 for Slack. An eight-point difference there, not much. Slack needs to, well, just 
sort that out a little bit in the in the third quarter, get themselves a little bit closer, be a little bit more tighter in defence and get themselves back on track. We're going to take a break and there's going to be some high octane basketball coming your way here for this battle season two opener between Duke and Slack. We're only moments away from the start of the second half of this opening clash here for the second season of the BAL. And to be honest with you, it's been a tight tussle, but Duke are leading by eight points over Slack of Guinea, the neighbors down in the southeastern part of Senegal. Look at, the, look at that look. That's a striking look, isn't it, from the, uh, the Serbian coach, Zelko Zetrovic. A bit concerned? Well, maybe a little sweer, maybe a little bit. Um, Q, how, what, what do they need to do to get back into this, into this clash slack? Because they're not losing it, but they keep, they're keeping them at arm's reach at the moment, Duke. There's very little to choose between these two teams, and really it is a game of small margins. Robbie, I think it's going to come down to crucial shot making, under pressure, and uh, just the ability to recognize good, a good shot from a great shot. Both these teams move the basketball pretty well. I, I think there are times down the stretch where Slack was just too reliant on their individual talent. Marcus Crawford doing the work with his 13 points. Right, so uh, I think that it's uh, very important that we mention that the uh, that the president of Senegal is here. And of course, he's here because he loves his basketball, Mr. Macky Sal. And he is obviously thrilled to be part of this in terms of you know, giving it the rubber stamp with um, Hamdou Diallo Fall, the president of the, the BAL, because it just makes so much sense. In fact, Asha touched on it earlier regarding sport in Senegal with the Africa Cup of Nations, winning it for the very first time earlier this month. Uh, the president is here and he's obviously rejoicing with the fact that this competition is here now. It was meant to be here last year. It wasn't because of COVID. We went to Rwanda, but we're here now. Well, you have to give him credit. Uh, this is a man who cares about sports. You know that uh, four years from now, Senegal will host the Youth Olympics and they will be the first ever African country to host an Olympics event. And this is why we're here at the Dakar Arena. You can see that it's right next to the Stade du Senegal, which was launched also uh, less than uh, three weeks ago. And for them to really win uh, the Africa Cup of Nations, just you know, good story. And this is why Dakar University Club are under pressure but also good motivation to have the president come and watch them here at the BAL. Fantastic facilities, fantastic story, and these are world-class facilities that we get to broadcast from and that the players get to play in, and you can see it both at the, start, the stadium, the, the soccer arena, and here at the Dakar arena where the BAL is being hosted. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's getting bigger and better. In fact, the Dak... The Dakar Arena, south of actually Dakar, you know, it's about a 20-minute drive, but honestly, it's easy to get to. Uh, looking at Marcus Crawford, standout player so far. He's got 13 points. Um, he's, he's playing pretty well, but his team are trailing by eight. He wants to turn that around, but he's been um, identified as one of the danger men, and I think the Duke will be well proactive in that department as well. He took 10 shots in that first half, and that's a high usage rate. And on the other end. Of course, the man Jordan Abudu re leading the way on only three or four shots. And he's got eight points, yeah. And his eight points. So you see the efficiency and the way that the ball is being shared differently by the two teams. Abudu drops it in for three. Sorry, the statement's been made, but it is, of course, Adama Diakite. Statement shot just to open up the half. They made the first shot of the first quarter, they make the first shot of the second half. Lovely layup as well, the, the very soft hands dropping it in and a very swift response there from Slack. They needed to react. You can't let Duke get away, otherwise they will go away. Miller Jr., the second player on the floor to hit into double digits, he's got 10. Oh, there's the, the little hesitation and the, the flick of the, the fingers to get the ball over the top. Comes to nothing there from Faye. And Slack, oh, just losing possession at that last wow. split second. But the foul's been awarded. He's down on the ground. I hope he's not suffering. 
little bit of a hard hit. Let's just have a look at that again. It, it was a good read. He got the defender on his back and forced the foul. Play caught behind the offense, and so forced into committing that defensive foul. Yeah, he just, it was that left hand, wasn't it? It was just like pulling him back as he was doing the lovely little spinning pirouette as if he'd just come from the Beijing Olympics. Um, beautifully done. Draws the foul. And there's the other uh, the coach's reaction, of course, you know. Come on, sort it out. Villa Junior going to take more responsibility, I think, just down the stretch here. Like I said, it's been with Slack since 2018. At numbers of 16 and 16.8 and 9.8, that's almost a double-double. So expect him to pick up the scoring and to pick up uh, usage rate here in the second half. That's a seven-point game now, 48-41. Of course, uh, uh, they have to eat into that lead if they want to make a statement here in the opening clash against their hosts. At the moment, it's looking pretty, pretty good for Duke. As the ball comes out and Yang. Oh, it's a long-range shooter coming in, and it's a little bit of frustration there for Jordan Abadou, Frenchman, not finding his range. Oh, loads of space, the drive, that's so, so easy, beautifully done. And I tell you, you know, he looks so dangerous, so big part, but the, it just opened up once again. He didn't have any defender stopping him from going down that path. Virtually no defense present, and Obekpa allowed to get right into the paint, and he got an easy two. Well, the ball trying to be dropped in into uh, Diakite, sorry, into um, into Kaba's hands, but taken away. Smooth work from Corbett. Oh, that was a, a, a flat. The foul was committed already by Yang, so it's going to be possession for Duke. I think we're going to see a, a, a change defensively here from Duke because they're just allowing too much play and too much dribble penetration into the painted area. And Miller just getting away from the cameraman, but... We'll thank him for that later. We need that <laughs> angle. We need those images. What they won't be happy about is the amount of space and time that these slack players are getting, and it's almost looking too free. Can't be that comfortable with ball in hand. Unable to sink the second Miller Jr. So it's a four-point game. So we, we, you know, things are looking a lot better for Slack since the start, despite the fact that uh, Abadou dropped in three points right from the start. That's lovely, lovely passing into the paint, and it's been sunk by that man, Adama Diakite, a prospect, uh, uh, a fine young player who is coming through this through this team and showing us what he's capable of doing. Is that a great example of the two different styles of basketball we're seeing? Duke prepared to move the basketball as a team and find the open shot. Slack looking more for individual play off the pick and roll. And again, they're trying to drop the ball in. He's got a little bit of lady luck on his hands. Diakita gets the ball back out wide to Nyang. Nyang tries to drop it in, but it's uh, just come off the medal. Made safe there by, by Chris Obekpa. Big position here. Long range. Oh, if that had gone in, it would have been a one. Uh, it would have been a, what, a, a three point game. Three points and one possession. Corporate shot, just wide lift. And you see, he understands but by the grimace on his face just how important a shot like that can be. Uh, they won't be too upset. It's been a good start to this third quarter for, for the team from Guinea. It's really good. Got to, got to play the patience game. Watch the clock, but play patient. There's Abadou trying to twist and turn and make himself available. The attempt at a, at a drive through and then using the backboard comes to nothing there from Diakite at the other end. If Slack can get themselves points, then it's a different game altogether. Finds a little bit of space, comes out to the Nigerian Obekpa. Off the metal, second chance. Oh, and he absolutely smashes it in. Beautiful work at the backboard. That was top-notch stuff, wasn't it, coming from Jawachi Nziako. Ziyakor at the right place at the right time, but it's hustle plays like that that can help seize momentum. And right now, a scoring run for Slack as they continue to make inroads into the lead. And we can go back to this three, three point one possession scenario. 
we're going to actually go and uh, talk to Asha. Are you, you're in a really fine place to actually see just that much space the Slack have actually got moving into the D. It looked pretty easy for them for those few uh, little moves that they pr produced in the last couple of minutes. Well, indeed, but uh, I'll be lucky if uh, Dan Miller doesn't knock me off. I mean, the, <laughs> the cameraman survived. <laughs> <laughs> you stay safe, Asha. We don't want anything happening to you. I truly need to stay safe. You're, you're a key player. You're a point guard. <laughs> Here we go, just a little move, he's doing so well. That is sensational. Patience pays off there, Q. That was a delight to the eye, wasn't it, from Chris Obekpa. And look, he's got he's into double figures already. Great footwork, getting the seal, and then also patience to get the defender static. Two more points to the total. Working the ball well, Jake Tiano gets the ball back out. Oh, it's been pinched, stolen. And there's the, the drop in to say hello, look at that, he got the three points. And look, it's a completely different game now, Q. It's ri ridiculously different after, what, five minutes of the first, of the third quarter. And that's just defense from Obekwa. Crawford out in transition, he pulls up for three, knocks it down. And you can hear a pin drop in this arena right now. The, the way the momentum has shifted completely oh, and a one-point lead for Slack. A one-point lead for Slack? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So, there's something to be said, I think, uh, you know, within the Duke team. Let's, let's listen, if we can. Yeah, we can't really hear because um, it's a massive party that's taking place in the Dakar Arena. Uh, we're going to take a break back in a, in a little moment. The West, the West African tables have turned and all of a sudden, Slack of Guinea have edged ahead by a point. It's 50 for Duke, 51 for Slack. Uh, we got 5.27 left in the third quarter. There's a lot of basketball to be played, Q. But how about that? That is just uh, quite remarkable. A whole shift, 14 to 5. That, that's what the current scoring run is, that's what the current position is. And Duke need a strong offensive possession and then need to come back defensively as well. That's not going to please. That's not going to be the, the desired outcome out of a timeout. Tian Yang just to lose a possession when he was trying to slalom his way between defenders. A uh, ball at the other end, Slack, just moving into a really solid position, but that the jump shot, that turning jump shot comes to nothing. Back off the back off the ring to pick it up with a chance to go ahead with three from outside down the left side. Oh, Marcus Crawford, of course, a key player with now 16 points and uh, in dominant force here for, uh, for Slack. And he's moving into, uh, into a very good place here as they make a change with Hamid Tariq Ali, who's going to come on for Duke. I don't know how impactful that change will be, but Ali will just try and find some open shooters. He might take the shot himself. That ball almost going to hand for Miller Jr. And I'm sure there are some Duke fans in the house that will be happy that it didn't. Cheikh Diallo still, well, we're still waiting for him to uh, stand up and be counted within the Duke team at the moment. Here he is picking the ball up. Oh, it was a little bit of a slip, but there was uh, this contact. He goes down, it's fine, and comes back up, and they'll get the ball back. And the foul is for Fofana. Fofana's first foul, and that is only the first team foul for Slack here in this third quarter. Diakite will get the ball. And there's the communication between uh, Abadou, the Frenchman, working with Diallo. Tariq Ali is Diallo. Oh, he finds a little bit of space. They back off, but it comes back off the metal. Diallo just been struggling a little bit from the field. Hasn't found his touch just yet. And uh, it's, it's had implications for Duke on the offensive end. Oh, that's a beautiful pass. Look at that! Oh, my good gracious me! It has been drained in a big way there. And the danger man producing the business, Obekpa, the standout player, hasn't got himself beyond Crawford's tally, but how about that? Fantastic play, and it's been done three ways. Obekpa, Crawford, and Miller Jr. 
here in the second half. Three-point lead. Here they go again. It's slack. Well, they definitely aren't that. Look at that! <laughs> He's looking around to try and rejoice with the fans. They're not rude. They're not even moving, are they? That was sensational stuff. Dropped in to say hello. Miller Jr. doing the business again. Ties himself as the new scorer along with Crawford. And we have a big three for Slack here because three players in double figures. That's nicely done by Diakite. You need to do that. You take the ball, you roll, you drop it in. Big boy play is what we call that out in the paint. Diakite muscles one in. Oh my good grace, where did that come from? He's been doing it all game. Marcus Crawford has got the hot hand from the outside. 19 points now, and they've got to find an answer for him on the defensive end. Kiwa wasn't ready for that. Just around the screen, pulls up with a jump shot, and then able to get the foul. This could be a four-point play. Just look at this again, just like, okay, one. Let's just look at what Christopher Obegpah does, because that is just essentially, here you go, I know what you're going to do with it, here you go. He drops it in, the smile is on the face. Look, they're, they're looking like they've got a little bit of verb and swagger now, Slack, and we've got three minutes left to play. Usher is going to tell us a little bit more about what he thinks. Can they come back? Are they capable of coming back, Duke? Because these fans have been silenced. Well, to be quite honest, uh, Duke have not been themselves in this third quarter, but also you have to give credit to Slack. They've come out with a lot of hunger and they want to, you know, get on with the business and win this game. And that is something that, uh, you know, speaks about the character of the team and their head coach. I'm not surprised that this is how they've reacted. Uh, Zijevic is uh, such a coach who says, let's get onto the court and give our very best, whether we win or lose. And that's the attitude that they've come out with. Wait there a sec, you, you blink, you blink going from this, the first half to the second half and all of a sudden 52-61. That doesn't make sense. What's going on? This is, you know, complete appreciation for what they're doing. Crawford, Miller Jr. and this slack team are just on fire. This is remarkable. They talk about the importance of the third quarter, Robbie, and yeah, coming out flat in the third quarter will not serve you because it sets up and that, that fourth quarter. And right now, Duke may be guilty of coming out flat. Well, the chances are that, uh, you know, they're going to just defend really well at the back, get hold of the ball and, and go again because at the moment, you know, when you've got that confidence, you can do anything! Look at that! That is beautiful! The twisting and the turning, he was like a jelly deal, and all of a sudden he goes up, drops it in using the backboard. That is just brilliant. Ziakor is the man on this occasion. They just don't have answers, and right now, Slack can score from just about anywhere. Ziakor with the isolation in the low block, two more to the total. It's a bit concerning, isn't it? It's a bit concerning. Duke need to react. They need to get themselves back on track. 2.15 left in the third. The ball comes out to Tarakali. They need to stabilize. They need a player to just calm things down and say, look, guys, we got all of the talent in the world. We're just as good as these, uh, these guys we're playing against. But we need to get those points, and we need to be calm and cool about it, you know, and feed off the experience and the wisdom of those older guys on the court. They always talk about basketball being a game of runs, and right now, it is Slack who are benefiting like from me. their yeah, own hard work. Duke really have to ride this out and to see if they can make inroads. They don't want it to go much, much, much more, but they don't want the lead to increase much more than this. 11 points should be the limit. And with the final two minutes, maybe they can seize back some momentum that will see them do better in the fourth quarter. They just saw Miller Jr. just sneaking up into the corner because of the, uh, as soon as, as soon as they get, they get the ball, they want to get it straight up to him. He's sneaking up. He nearly went behind us at the, at the compositions there, Q, just so that no one would see him. He's hiding down there. But uh, we're going back to the free throw line, and all of a sudden, you know, obviously, they need to get points. I will do off the man. I remind viewers at home, the halftime score was 45-37, and that was two Duke, and right now, it's a 63-52. A complete turnaround. Diop. Diop. Oh, that's just not good enough, is it? I, I think the fans need to start to make a little bit of noise because if they want to get their 
They want to get their team moving and shifting. They know exactly what they can do. And the fans, when they start to do those dances, you know, and they're all dressed in yellow, of course, and, uh, you know, getting behind. Oh, my word, what is not... There's nothing going he wrong in this game today. Hand right 22 now. points there for Crawford. That is ridiculous. He's, too, he's on fire, that man. Killing it from the outside. Crawford just can't be stopped. Fai goes on a bit of a wonder, loses possession, they try and get it back, the foul's been committed. That, I think, is Crawford's fifth three-pointer. There you go, Chadrick, Fili. Crawford get hold of the ball, there we can see it. When it's going for you, it's going for you. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Diallo gets the ball out wide. Tarek Ali just sucks in the defender. A little bit of space. Gets it out wide. Another chance down the left side this time. Lovely jump shot. That is beautiful. And that's just, uh, well, instigated a reaction from the Senegalese fans here. Jake Tidian Fai doing the, the damage there with a beautiful shot. Nice mid-range jumper, but now they've got to get something here on the defensive end. They do indeed, loads of space right in the middle. Slack just playing their own game at the moment. And they gotta try and steal the ball. They gotta get some possession back or just hope that the balls don't go in like that shot there. Tidied up, rebound taken by Diop. Here is Tarek Ali. The rush possession, not sure about such shot selection on that one. Oh, the slap away, and you can see wow. the, the reaction from Coach Zelko Zetrovic is just, you know, quite incredible. Well, it's the, the length of Mohamed Keita in the lane, and that outstretched left, left, left hand getting the block, and they are making it tough for Duke in the paint. Find that came just off the basketball. Chance now with three throw lines. Zisevich chatting to the referees, and it's been a feature with the noise in the arena and the atmosphere. You know, sometimes it's hard for the players to hear the whistle, and also the coaches have got to get their the message across sometimes. Now, uh, of course, there's uh, a gentleman's agreement that the, uh, the players that are, that are coming in to this team, you know, the 18 year olds coming through the NBA Academy, of course, elevate, uh, will only play three minutes. Uh, it's not the case. If they're playing well, just keep them on the keep them on the court. You know, it's the coach's call. They got to read the coach's what's call. On yeah, the floor. and you can see who's just come on. It is that man, Sani, of course, Babaka Sani, who's already provided us with some fine aerial fireworks. There, five points already. What can he do to help Slack or stop Slack from uh, from providing the fireworks again? Contact again as Crawford rises up for the three. That's going to give him three shots from the free throw line. A semi good defensive position. You like the energy from Fire, but he got a touch on it. And uh, that's going to send a shooter to the free throw line. And the current game leading top scorer, 22 points. Crawford with a chance to just give Slack some breathing room. There you go. That's the uh, first going in it. And uh, last 12 seconds of the third quarter, and then uh, take a break. We'll see what Coach Pafet Ajibon has got to say to his players before they go into, well, the business end of this opening encounter. is such an important clash. It's such an important game. You want to get the right results. You want to get off on the right foot. Some big games coming up as well afterwards, Q, for these teams. Definitely some big games. So let's sort of talk a bit about Mark Crawford. You know, he played for U.S. Monastery and had numbers of 14, three assists, three 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 point one rebounds, and one steal. And, and you can see why it's like acquired his services because he's got a hard hand with his 25 points, missed one of those free throws, but has given them a significant lead. And to the last 10 seconds of the third, it's 56, 69, 13 points. Duke trying to finish off with a, a positive note, and that will be a foul. He went on a little bit of a rampaging, darting run there, Ham, Hami Tariq Ali. Taking that onto his knees, back up on his feet. He'll get a couple of, he get a pair of shots to try and sink. It's all, it's been almost like momentum-wise, the ball's on the floor, and we have only two seconds left. They 
going to want to get a good quality shot of this position. There's the long range shot, it looks good. Well, it's just gone over the chop, and that's the end of the third quarter. And there's no points added onto the pile there for Hami Tariq Ali and Duke Trail by 13 points going into the final quarter. There's a lot, to, a lot of work to do for the home team from Senegal. 56-69, little break, and we'll be back with, with Usher, Q, and myself in a couple of moments' time. Stay with us. And so we're back here in the Dakar Arena. We're here for the final quarter of this opening clash. It is the hosts, of course, the team from Senegal, Duke, up against Slack of Guinea, neighbors down in the southeast of the country, of course, south of Gambia, of course, which is right in the middle of Senegal. 56-69. There's a lot of work for them to do, but this final quarter will be pivotal. This will be important for the foundation of where you're going to go in this competition. This man will start to feel a little bit of the heat. Great coach, but with a little bit of work to do now. Money time. It is absolutely money time, and the best way to silence a home crowd is to have the kind of quarter that Slack had. You know, they shot the crowd into a little bit of submission, and what Duke will want to do is try and bring their home fans into it here down the stretch. Uh, you know, there's there's quite a few fouls taking place, you know, they're being committed in this, uh, in this class, especially in the last quarter. And we enter the fourth quarter, only nine seconds in, and we've already got an infringement in the paint. Well, this will be side ball and one of the features in the BAL as well is that on the inbounds, yeah, it will happen yeah, generally from the free throw line extended. There are a couple of extenuating circumstances, but it helps elevate the pace of the game. He's not going to do it again. It is just rolling off his hands. That is just remarkable. He is, he's just doing the business tonight. Crawford up to 28 points. Uh, Terrell Stoglin last year was the first player to hit 40 points, of course, playing for A.S. Sally, who he's playing with here in this conference once again. He's on his way. He's heading in that direction, maybe. They've got to ride the hard hand. That was three-pointer number seven. And uh, he's shooting it at just about 67% from the outside. Here they go again. Slack just on the, on the prowl around the edges of the D. That's a lovely little drop in the attempted follow-up. They need to get the ball up quick. They got to get moving. They got to get their points. That is lovely. That's a nice piece of play there from Take to the end five. Tease your defender, tease your defender, and then go around the outside, lay it up, and she's in. They like that. That came in transition. Beautiful move to get to the rim, and uh, they'll be more happy with the two points to the total. Well, he's been working his magic or back back, and he's got 13 points to himself. Oh, that's just not good enough. He could, just didn't get his range right, Miller Jr. It's been a while since he tried <laughs> tried one from downtown, I think. He needs to get his hands warm again. There's no need for him to take that shot. They, they've got a hard hand. They've got a guy who's knocking down threes. You know, trying to spread the floor. Try and find the guy. And uh, grab a look quickly at what's happening on the floor. 54%, you see how the field goal percentage is skewed. Slack has gone all the way down to 40. They were at 46% at the half and uh, 14 assists to 10 as far as uh, the way ball distribution has happened. That's a foul, number 24, Ibrahima There's the foul and there's the... Uh, and the 58-72 scoreline. It's uh, got to turn possession into points now. This is important, Terry Kelly. They're just not getting their shots. They're not sinking their shots. It doesn't drop in there for that man, Abel Diop. And again, I think I haven't seen them score for quite a while now, and it's uh, becoming a bit of an issue because the confidence will, will drop. And of course, the heads will drop, and then they see the scoreline and realize that, you know, it's just too far away. That was a good opportunity. Oh, no, there were three of them, and they still couldn't get the ball in the basket. I can't believe that. Ali had so many options. He had the shooter to the outside, opted to throw up the alley -oop. There were two players, no communication. And I think that sums up uh, the performance so far that we've seen from Duke. Got to get it right. Got to get it right. No alley-oop at all. 
<laughs> there was a lack of communication there. There was two boys coming down that left left side. Looked for the higher percentage shot and it just didn't go the way of the point guard nor his recipient. That's uh didn't get his range, Cheek to the end fight. The shaking of the head, you know, the body language tells you everything, doesn't it, Q? And I'm afraid the Duke, they're not showing the right body language because, well, they're a little bit deflated. They've seen what has been, you know, how, things, how the tables have turned, and it's important that they turn things around. It's a good opportunity. And they're not even getting the long ranges like that, OK? That is nice. Now, that is slick, and that is the way to do it, you know? You make sure you rebound, but you own that ball, and you make sure it goes where it's meant to go. When fortune favors you, you have to take advantage. Ali didn't knock down the three, but they got the second chance opportunity, and they'll be grateful because that might just give them a little bit of a kickstart here in the fourth. Well, it's a good steal from uh, from Tarek Ali, and now they got the ball back once again, taken forward there by the big man, Chadri Lufile. Here he is. Gets the ball down, the pass is a little bit feisty, but the ball comes out, there's a good chance, the flick. Oh, losing the rebound, and it's into the hands of Miller Junio, who goes darting off down the right side, trying to get past his man, running out of space there. I tell you, that move by Faye was, was good. It was just to finish that lag, but patience on the offensive end, and now they've got another chance down here on the defensive side. Usher, we, we, we need to hear from you. We need to hear from you. What have you got for us, Usher? Well, when you look at uh, the body language of Duke, they seem to be extremely very shocked, but they need to come out of it. They need some leaders on the court, and um, when you see how much time they have on the clock, they really need to do that ASAP and uh, get back into this one. Otherwise, Slack look like they're on top of the game. Uh, we know that basketball is a game of, uh, you know, movements like They'll swing this side and that, but Slack have owned uh, the second half of this game. Uh, so we're going to come back to you a little bit later as, as well, because you can tell us about the... Um, we're, we're, in, we're in the presence of basketball royalty, so you can give us tell us who's actually here a little bit later on. Let's get back to the court and we'll, uh, and we'll find out how they're going to deal with this too, or if they can deal with it. They get the ball back, so it's a, it's a turnover ball. A little bit disappointed there, Obekpa, uh, because, well, it should have gone their way. I think we're going to use a, a phrase, game on. It'll be game on if they can get it within 10 points and we still have five minutes left on the clock. I think they'll, 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 they'll still see that as an opportunity. There's still so much basketball time left and it, so much that can be done in terms of a run as far as Duke and the host soccer turn. That was really nicely done by Baba Kassane. Just uh, the soft touch, maybe just a little bit too soft with the fingers at the end. Couldn't roll it over, but, uh, you know, it's... Great prospect, great future ahead of him. That's a nice little turn, that's a nice little use of the body. The footwork was fantastic, and they've lost the possession once again. And, uh, well, they're just um, not, not finding the points, got possession, not getting the points. Miller offered a double spin, but two defenders on his back, handed it off to Obekpa, and the finish again is letting him down. That, that extra handoff, good defensive pressure, forces a miss. Duke trying to tighten things up, make it count. Every phase of attack, every offensive play, they've got to get points. And they've got to steal. It's not tit for tat now, it's you've got to get it, you've got to get three points, you've got to get points, you've got to get something from every play. It's going from our oh, oh my word, the youngster just shows up and produces a, a damaging play that's going to turn things around a little bit. Those three points, top notch. You can tell from the minute he had that in his hand that it was going in and a big time shot by Baba Kassane. Yes, Shani up to eight points. This is remarkable. This is for the 18 year old. Remember, he's 18 and that's a nice effort there, but it's uh, just uh, not hit the sights. Once again, it's an, it's an attacking phase of play that comes to nothing for Slack. Back within nine. 5-10 to play, it's very much still in the balance. 1.7 left on the shot clock here as they try and get the ball out and do something. We've got a timeout, and uh, it's been called by Slack, I think. 
Uh, wait, Usher, oh, please, okay. tell us, tell us, tell us who's in the hall. Who have we got? Well, obviously, I've got to start with who's seated right next to me, Mak Tandiai, a Senegalese legend, the first ever Senegalese to play in the NBA. And uh, obviously, when you look at uh, upstairs there, you have Dikembe Mutombo from the Democratic Republic of Congo. You have uh, Masai G from the Toronto Raptors, Mark Tatum, obviously from the NBA, and uh, the president of the Republic of Senegal, and Victor Williams, of course, uh, who's also basketball royalty. Yeah, this is just a remarkable, isn't it? And uh, we're listening in just one second, just to find out, you know, the fighting talk for Slack to try and get themselves motivated. Of course, Zetrovic will want nothing less than tight defense going into the last five minutes. You know, hold four to the back, patient in attack, use the clock in a big way. It's, it will definitely come down to some coaching strategy. You, you might see some presses thrown away of both teams just to see if they can increase the tempo. But it's going to be a combination of player smarts and experience to recognize what's being thrown at them on the floor. And then it's going to come down to just plain old gusto and uh, the ability to hold your temperament and your composure under pressure. Asha, thanks for that as well. What a remarkable lineup we've got of A-listers. Um, Africa's best really here to embrace this wonderful competition that you're watching right around the world and we are absolutely thrilled to be here and bringing you some commentary and some wonderful information from uh, you know from all of us uh, from our South African and Ugandan you know partners in crime here arguably the premier entertainment product on the continent and basketball is growing this is the basketball Africa League Fantastic stuff, and we see a, a chance as Slack go and get the ball out. That's gone out, that wasn't touched, and that was good, strong defensive play just to stay on his man. He, he, it worked well, didn't it, from um, that man, Chaudhary Lufile. Got in the way. Entry pass, and it's timing as well as just defensive awareness that allowed to pick up this possession. Every single possession now has a little bit more pressure on it as we head down the stretch all comes out to Tarek Ali waits waits goes for three goes for three back off the backboard and it comes to nothing Lufile on the deck back up on his feet and here they go again Crawford they're patiently waiting to strike like a like a viper in the desert there it is dropping itself in but it's gone a little bit too far over the top there and picked up. Here's a chance. Sally going again. Patience is a virtue. The ball comes out. See, that is smart play. Oh, what a block that was. Incredible stuff there coming from Miller Junior, showing his defensive prowess. Three points a miss back off the, the metal, and it's just tidied up at the back. Miller Junior, the block, Miller Junior, the rebound. It's timing and spikes it away. You are not going through. It's a no-go zone. Really good work. They're trying to jump it. Oh, it's been dunked in a big way there. You see Obekpa. Part of that triple threat, Obekpa, 15 points. And, and right now, until they find an answer, uh, Duke up against it. Yeah, Duke are up against it in a big way. Four more games, of course, to try and finish in the top four. That's better stuff. And it's been dropped in. Abel Diop doing the damage. The captain. Well, it is a masterful shot there from down the right side. Captain there. Quietly oh. chipping away. 12 points for him. And none bigger than that three. Back within eight. Oh, my word. This is just strong stuff. The smiles, the smiles on this man. What is he doing? He's hit the 30-point bracket. This is a stunning play from Crawford. He is absolutely feeling it. And 30 points to start out this opening encounter. He's got to keep doing this type of scoring down the stretch. As we just got a little moment to uh, to go and speak to Usher. Usher, you got something to tell us about the uh, about the officials, I believe. 
Yes, uh, obviously for the second time in a row at the BAL, we have uh, female referees involved here, and that's massive for the game of basketball on the African continent. Sarah Gamal El Shanubi from Egypt. She's been absolutely incredible, became the first Arab and African woman to officiate at the Olympics. She was in charge of uh, the three on three games. Just last weekend, she was also in charge of the FIBA basketball uh, World Cup qualifiers here inside the Dakar Arena. She's been breaking all those barriers, especially for an Arab woman and also as a woman. And she's been incredible in this game. You could see how she's handled herself, uh, good communication, and also uh, great respect from the players. Refereeing is a tough job already, uh, and you overcome some of those barriers, Robbie. Fantastic story. And, uh, Breaking boundaries is what the BAL is all about. Players and coaches have always got stories about, you know, fronting up to, to officials, of course, and it is not easy on either side, you know, because there's going to be disagreements, right? But she has been exemplary. There's no doubt about it. You're absolutely right, Nasher, and it was a good point to, to talk about Sarah El Shanubi of Egypt. Shukran, Sarah. That is just top notch. We appreciate you and what you're doing. And shukran, Asher. Oh, shukran, Asher. Shuk shukran, Anta Sadiki. Anta Sadika, sorry. Oh, my word. My Arabic's not great these days. Shukran, Aki. Shukran, Aki. I see you. Right, listen, 2.42. It is game time. They've got to do something. The ball's been pinched, but they get the... What well, is frustration there? Diakite has committed the foul. He snatched it out of the hands, but I'm afraid that he picks up the foul. And of course, it just it paves the way for Slack to once again show us what they're doing. Contact with the left hand on the hand. That's all it took for the referee to say, "I'm sorry, no, that is a foul." It's a body That's positioning a issue. If he kept his hands just a little bit further back and straight up and contested, it would be a legal contest. The ball might not have gone in, but at least allowed a chance for the rebound. But we go to the free throw line nonetheless. Ziakor to try and get double figures from the free throw line. Of course, we've got 30 for Crawford, 18 for Miller Jr. And Obekpar has got 13. And he drops it in, he sinks that, that pair. The look on Parfait Ajibon's face basically says it all. OK, it's not going to happen today normally. We're going to have to work on this because the BAL is for big boys and we've got to stand up and be counted. And they deserve to be counted because they got some great talent in the squad. Great layup, beautifully done. You talk about big boys, that's what we call a big boy play. Just all of his body being used and going to the left hand, a great pocket by Yakite. 68-77, and uh, Duke on the cusp of something. Well, they were going into uh, the second half, but the turnaround, massive turnaround from Slack. They'll get possession back on this occasion. Kate Kita just trying to create against a bigger body. He's bumped out of bounds, and I'll never see him take a break. And uh, back they come to Obekpa to utilize all of that 6 8 frame inside the paint down the stretch. He's put in such a great game, isn't he? Great performance, Obekpa. Uh, offensive front, but also just the way that he's just, uh, uh, you know, he's, 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 he's just blanking out anybody who wants to try and go past him. You know, he's, he's got tentacles, he hasn't got arms, he's just stopping it. There's eight of them all at the same time, it's wonderful. Having a fantastic Great game. defender. 134 left on the clock, here he is, Crawford. Crawford's been the standout man on this occasion, he can't find his man. Oh, look at that, Sané, oh. but I'm afraid it's a double dribble. Otherwise, that would have gone down as a nice little finish. Oh, it's a shame, isn't it? It's such a shame, man. You know, he did all that he could, especially on the defensive end. Defense came across and he had to pick up his dribble. And denying the young man a highlight, the referees and on his own floor. Well, he would have got double point, uh, double figures at that point. 68-77, small break, 126 left on the clock. 126 left on the clock. There's a lot at stake here, but I'm afraid that it's 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 I never like to say that it's impossible because we've seen stranger things happen, you know, with the B-ball, you know, finales and uh, overtime and all the rest of it. But 126 and you know there's um it's eleven. Eleven points. It's an eternity. There is still a chance that Duke can come back, and that's just not the optimist in me. A couple of threes in the game 
complexion changes entirely. A lot depends on what happens right here. But this man on the ball there is the master of ceremonies, and he, know, he knows exactly how to conduct his show, and he's putting in a show that will be memorable, that will go down as the what happened in the opening clutch! It's been drained that in a big way. Hit. Smash it down, Ziakor. Get it down there. Get your points. Laugh. Move on. Get back and defend. Dropping in to say hello. No, it's not happening on that occasion there from Babacar Once again, the layup at the other end. It's all opening up. It's end-to-end -end stuff. It's going mental here. But Duke are going to find it very complicated to clamber back. I, I think that dunk was the straw that broke the camel's back. That extra bucket is going to make it very tough. It's a wonderful, wonderful rebound there. The layup just to find that space from Tieno Nyang. Sensational stuff. Just teasing that slack defense. 30 odd seconds left to go. Nine points in it. Should be a foul. 11 Should points. Should be a way to force possession, but I think they're thrown in the towel. No, it's just an easy two under the basket, and it's yeah, that's what they do, and they're just uh, throwing in the towel. You can go. They're shaking it, shaking hands. This was the moment, I think, that emphasis dunk by Nsiako and See ya. waving goodbye yeah. to their opponents. Slack from Guinea opening up with a very, very important win in terms of the competition. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's back to work now, isn't it, for Pafed Ajibon. You know, the great thing is you've got four more games to play, but just look at this. They're having an absolute blast now. It's fun time, isn't it? Miller Jr. with another pair, but he just smashes it in. The dunk is a, a thing of beauty as we just uh, walk out the last couple of seconds to wrap up this opening clash here at the Dakar Arena queue. Well, there's a, a little altercation off the ball, and this was Miller Jr. elevating with two, and then just uh, having something to say to the Duke bench. And they didn't take too kindly for it. 22 points for Miller Jr. He did have, it has a four personal fouls, and I think uh, he let the court do the talking, and it's going to be back to the drawing board, as you said, for Coach Parfait. Just finalization in terms of how much time left on the clock. I think there is 1.2 seconds left in the game. Yeah, of course, it's, um, it's essential that the timing is spot on. Very important basketball, of course, because you can, you can win games with half a second, so we know that. And that's why, you know, we have to make sure that everything's top-notch for such an important competition. It also looks like there was a technical foul call, and I think that was because of the altercation uh, after the dunk off the ball. Uh, it's going to send uh, Miller Jr. to the free throw line. Well, it's uh, first mister coming in for Miller Jr., as you mentioned. Now they get the ball back, and, well, it's going to come to an end, isn't it? There's so much passion between the teams, and pride is not only at stake, but the chance to advance to the finals and the playoffs in Kigali. And an important win here for Slack. Marcus Crawford, I think the standout player on the day with his 30 points. Obekwa with 13, Miller Jr. 22. There it is, 70 points for Duke, 85 for Slack. It's a win for the visitors. They've silenced the home team on this occasion. It's one of five matches. There's a long, long way to go before you can say that you've qualified for the top four out of the six. But here today, Duke, well, they lose 70, 85, and a Slack, and they'll take something Fiddle positive from this. This is a major, major Don't victory. And uh, this is a major, Busy major NBA. victory com. for them. Tickets and they'll take a lot from this because, well, it PA wasn't open. easy for them in the Thank first half, but they the clambered game. back and they've reversed Two the tables in the second half. In the third the quarter, of course, trip. it was so important and, and they managed to do it. Marcus Crawford will get his reaction right now. And uh, he's going to come in... Uh, Come and join us for a couple of words. Wonderful point tally, but a, a remarkable and a, and a very important clash for them. And uh, 
He'll be with us in one second, the former US Monastir player. Just getting set up with uh, the headset. Marcus, hi Marcus, how are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you, I can hear you. Ma Marcus, first of all, congratulations. Yes, sir. Um, what an incredible, you know, turnaround. First of all, when you look at that first half, you were playing second fiddle. You know, we, we saw that Duke were really in control. They were had the home advantage. How did you manage to turn things around and, and get on top of this game and then carry it out to win this game by 15? Uh, I just, just keeping my team with a nice, good camaraderie. You know what I'm saying? We just keeping a nice composure. You know what I'm saying? I just told them it's a long game. And we were going to eventually get back in the game just playing defense and getting rebounds. And they had a lot of offensive rebounds in their first half. And we did a great job on the defensive end. And we made some shots in the second half. And, you look good, and I, I'm proud of us. We saw that you were extremely buoyant or smiling all the time. Your 30-point tally, I mean, you know, that's just, that's up there in the BAL. You know, tell me about this, you know, personal uh, experience for you and the team that you're playing with this year. Yeah, it's just, uh, I, I played last year with Monastery. You know, I got a little experience out here, and, you know, I was just bringing that with my new team out here and just wanted to keep some good energy. You know, everybody looking, somebody's looking a little down. I just kept telling them, keep your head up, we're going to get back in this and, we actually did that, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of us. Talk to me a little bit about the importance of picking up a win in the first game, in the opening game of the Basketball Athletic League. Does oh, it yeah. set you up? Oh, yeah, it's most definitely important because even going to this game, you know, we heard a little talk, you know, no one expected us to win this game. So I'm really proud of us and my group, and I'm just glad we came here with the double. Oh, just one last question. You'll come up against the U.S. Uh, Monastir potentially. You know, I mean, it's going to be an interesting battle. Oh, yeah, you battle, know, that's, yeah. I was just playing with them last year. You know, they're my guys. I love Monastir, but... You know, I, I'm ready to, when we get in between these lines, I'm ready to go at them. Listen, congratulations, Marcus. You played a great yes, game. Sir. And uh, thanks, and uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Go get some rest. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, I mean, you know, when you actually look at what he contributed to that performance, you know, Q, we can most definitely say that that was a standout performance. It was up there, wasn't it? Definitely up there. And, and it was great shooting from the outside. He had the hot hand from the perimeter, but he was ably assisted. Miller Jr. chipped in with his 22 points. We have a look quickly at the stats. And what does stand out to me, Robbie, is how Dirk's field goal percentage dipped from 46 to 30, 36 in that second half and uh, the increase on the other side. And that, that just shows it's, it was a combination of great strut selection and then also just, I think, there was a decrease in defensive intensity. They were able to break down Duke's defense in the second half. 17 assists to the 14 means that uh, they distributed the ball a little bit better in the second half, and it was that three-point shooting. Strut selection, 9 of 21 to the 8 of 30. Uh, percentage just a little bit better as far as slack concerned. No, you, you know what? It, Q, you know, it's exactly that. You know, the, the shot selection was not the right one, I think, going into the second half. That is a wrap for us. Um, Usher, thank you so much for being with us today. Will you join us tomorrow? She's there. She's there. She's nodding. OK, all right, she's gone. Listen, Q, um, thanks a lot. We'll see you tomorrow, right? See you tomorrow, Robbie. More great PAL action. Congratulations to Slack. They take the first victory. It's 85-70 beating Duke. So much more basketball to come. It is game on for BAL season two. We'll be back tomorrow. Two games. Oh, yes. You better join us because it's going places. We're going places. And we're going to leave you with these wonderful dancers here. The Senegalese fans, despite the loss, are just enjoying themselves. Goodbye. Au revoir. And uh, shock.